Fuck around and find out. Official Twitter policy guidelines as presented by the man himself. So what is he referring to in this statement, Sean? I think, well, you never know, right? But I think it has to do with Kanye uh, losing his account for posting this image, which I've which, personally never seen before. So, and this is on Twitter, notice, and this hasn't been banned. So the question is, will this symbol by Twitter's machine learning and or you know computer vision detection uh, ban every use of this moving forward as an incitement to violence because that is why Kanye was apparently banned. Uh, and now, so let's talk about the origin of this. This is a official icon of a a cult, the Raelian Raelism. Railism. Railian. I think it's Railianism. Railian. So it is a UFO religion that was founded in the 1970s France by Claude Vaurien, now known as Rail. Scholars of religion classify Railism as a cult and a new religious movement. The group is formalized as an international Railian movement, IRM, or Railian church, hierarchical organization under Rail's leadership. Realism teaches that an extraterrestrial species known as Elohim created humanity using their advanced technology. An atheistic religion, it believes that the Elohim have historically been mistaken for gods. It claims that throughout history, the Elohim have created 40 Elohim human hybrids who have served as prophets, preparing humanity for news about their origins. Wild. Ooh, um, it's an alien, alien religious cult. Wow. And it goes on to say that Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad were all. Well, well interesting. Look at this. Look at this icon, though. This isn't the same one. Can you scroll down, Sean, to see if there's yeah. another version of this down lower yeah. on the page? Yeah, yeah it's um, in the just section. There it is. Go up. There you go. Okay, so oh. they have two different versions. I don't see it. I don't see it. All right, here. There you go. So those, there's the two different versions. Yeah. Um, now, you know, we're not going to pull up the swastika, but this isn't a swastika exactly. It's like the same general form, but swastika is actually tilted on its side. And, you know, the interesting thing about the image is that, you know, this whole rant that Kanye's on, like, I love Jewish people, but then, you know, basically, I love Nazis, I love Nazis the, the sort of... Um, paradox of that and the hypocrisy of it but like this image does sort of represent that in a sense it's it's a fusion of the jewish symbol with like the anti-jewish symbol so is yeah. kanye a part of this religion i mean is that why it was posted yeah. i guess that's where i'm confused like yeah. why i th i think there's i think the three pos or the most likely scenarios in this case is well one he may have just like found it off of google images from a search that was like swastika plus star of david and that's uh -huh. how he arrived on it and yes, well, like, I, yeah. I wouldn't completely rule that out since he, like i would not rule that out you never know um or mm -hmm. another another possibility would be i actually i like have a hard time believing milo or and especially nick, nick fuentes are actually christians based on their behavior and leaks about them so it's a possibility that, possibility that one of them could be a member or one of the other people at Yeezy or one of the other people around him. So, but I, I think um, Kanye actually being a member is pretty unlikely since it's not a group that's very pro Jesus. They reject the concept of traditional religion. Oh, that's a good point, Although yeah. nothing mm -hmm. about Kanye is consistent or coherent. So, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Well, and, and in our in our search, because I um, wanted to see if there was any of this type of stuff on Minds, and we can see that we we found a member of this movement who was you know buried on uh, on the site. And if you just scroll down a little bit, Sean, just to give people you know an idea of like the type. So you know, the COVID thing. Be happy. You know, some little like cheesy be happy meme. There's another weird version of the symbol. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. You know, a Tikhan quote, like kind of 
motivational memes, truth memes. So you, that's enough. Um, no alien memes. Yeah, I'm I bet if you went down for, you know, it's kind of like spiritual stuff. Um, yeah, totally spiritual. But the funny thing is, like, where are the, you know, where's the aliens? You would think was this is almost just like your standard, you know, inspirational meme yeah. kind of easy spiritual yeah. page, like mixed with some alternative media. Yeah. Um, and it's just funny, you know, like, anyway, oh, like, I, but there you go. There it is. Yep. There it Finally. Is. This is their creation. <laughs> this is a creation story right here. This yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. People flying. So yeah. I, I think it's fascinating because, like, do you guys think that Elon banned him before he even knew what the symbol what actually it was? was? <laughs> Interesting. So I don't think Elon knew. Do under the Freedom of Religion Act. <laughs> you know. God, I mean, yeah, you're right. That's a really good question. I don't think yeah. he knew. I didn't know what it was. I mean, I think a lot of people assumed what it was, but they didn't really look into it, you know? Like, what if he had... Yeah, because it was very... Uh, I mean, they called it incitement. And the reason that you would call it incitement is because you would say, oh, he has inserted a swastika, you know, into the Star of David... Right. And that means that he's calling upon, you know, a Holocaust mm -hmm. to come. Like, but but that would be a knee jerk reaction that is is actually, you know, totally n not obvious or provable that that is what he meant. Like, you could create that story around it, and obviously, based on the context of what he was just saying on Infowars. Yeah, you could certainly say it, but he wasn't calling for violence on Infowars. He was, you know, he, he, he was denying the Holocaust. He was, you know, definitely being anti-Semitic, but he wasn't call. you know, he, he, he thinks that he's Jesus saying, I love everyone. Right. Even the most evil. Yeah. Yeah, but that that word even, right? Uh, that's a very key word yeah. that he never used, right? Like, yeah, that was. I love everyone. Which, wait, sorry. Even, oh, even, you know. Even. Uh, yeah, that's I. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm like split on it. I mean, obviously, he's also a performer. He was in a mask the entire time. You know, this could be some kind of arc where he's going to like do a 180 and. Uh, completely, you know, yeah. be like, I was just exposing white supremacy. Ha ha ha. You guys felt, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's really strange. Like, I don't know how, how much weirder it's going to get. <laughs> personally. It's going to get, what, do you think? What, what, what are you seeing on the left? How's the left viewing this? Man, this is, um, a lot of, one of the narratives I've seen about him mainly is more than even Kanye since questioning Kanye's motives while he's in the midst of like a bipolar manic episode yeah. is pretty difficult. Um, if you've like ever known someone with bipolar disorder, it's usually very incomprehensible and erratic behavior that you can't really make sense of most of the time. But what Milo and Nick Fuentes are trying to get out of it is probably more interesting since they're the mm -hmm. ones who've always been beside, like since before this, he'd been going on some weird Twitter rants about the Jews which was anti-Semitic in a lot of ways, but it just ramped up 10 times once they got involved. So I've seen a lot of discourse around people questioning what's going on surrounding it. And another interesting element I actually have seen brought up more is that this isn't the first time Kanye has apparently praised Hitler either. Um, right. His album about his mental illness, Ye, I'm, not, I'm sure not all of you have heard it before. Um, it's an interesting project where yeah it's it's hard to describe it but it's mainly just him describing his experience he wanted to name that album hitler apparently and some people close mm. to him sort of told him dude this isn't a good idea and he backed down from it so wow. it's possibly hey, like it seems like it could be a mix of some prior biases he had towards hitler for whatever reason and now he just has people around him who are actually enabling it it's interesting when what, what year was that um 
Good quote. Wait, when did when did you release? Yeah, um, so ye, you know this I, released on not... in June of twenty June of twenty eighteen. So four okay, years. Okay, so that's a while ago. I mean, hmm. with with that said, because we know this about him that he is obsessed with like cult figures. You know, people yeah. like Steve Jobs, Picasso, Hitler, um, yeah. all of kind of the you know in very you know big quotes great figures throughout mm -hmm. history what you know whether you know good or evil and he he's obsessed with icons yeah icons yeah so yeah, yeah i agree I and know. you know what was interesting about the that the alex jones interview was the fact that he went after dave Chappelle. When Dave, like Dave Chappelle has done nothing but like defend Kanye for years and years. Wow. Um, Not wow. in the most okay, recent. The SNL thing, the SNL yeah. thing can go either, but it can go either way. Like he's, he pokes. Well, it attacked him. It attacked him, but it also sort of, I would say it more so attacked him than defended him. But it did, it did really? kind of, it, 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 he threw him a bone, but it was, it was largely coming at him. Interesting, yeah. So, yeah, and then Kanye responding on Alex Jones. What did he say? I didn't see what he said on Alex. So Jones, he actually, but... so he uh, he said that um, uh, Chappelle's a hack and that he steals his jokes from Owen Benjamin. Owen Benjamin is the comic. Um, like, I don't really know Owen. Like, yeah, he's a, he's a former. He, he he used to be mainstream. Like, there's like a video of. There's a video of him doing this like song with uh, Jimmy Fallon, this very funny, silly, politically incorrect song. And, mm. you know, basically he got, yeah, he, he sort of got canceled and banned from everywhere for similar, similar stuff. And now he lives in this, you know, he lives like out in the woods and live streams and has his community and kind of, you know, keeps to himself. Um, but also is like a very popular sort of edgy live streamer. Mm. And so people were even calling him sort of like the Jason IDW early on. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know the um, full story. I've heard him. Um, I've heard of him, but yeah, what Kanye was claiming was that Chappelle steals his jokes. <laughs> so, which, <laughs> I I would highly I mean, doubt. He's, he he's throwing so many stones, like True. you know, calling it's calling Tim an NPC <laughs> right as Alex. If if you compare how Alex was responding yeah. to what he was saying to how Tim was responding, um it's like Alex was getting uncomfortable. Like I posted a I posted a photo like I compare it to Philip Seymour Hoffman in The Big Lebowski. You know when he's like, like getting yeah. very uncomfortable with the dude. Yeah. Um, he was like doing the same kind of mannerisms, and he was also saying like, "I disagree. I disagree." Yeah. And Kanye was like letting him say he disagrees, but he wasn't yeah. letting Tim say he disagrees. And I think that that has to do with like seniority is with like alex as sort of the conspiracy legend and tim someone that he's not as familiar with but like i alex was not agreeing with him yeah no he wasn't he wasn't and neither did tim and tim he let him get one question and essentially i mean luke kind of said one thing and tim said one thing and that was it and then they were like no oh, we're done um yeah. Fuentes didn't say really anything in that. Uh, Milo had a bit in that, but it was mainly Kanye. And it was interesting when Kanye was like, you guys aren't letting me speak. I'm thinking like, seriously, <laughs> like you've spoke the whole time. It was very yeah. hard to follow where he was going. I'm like, he's talking about elections. He's talking about Jesus. He's talking about all this stuff. And it was like all over the place. And I'm like, I just couldn't follow it. You know, like I was just like, I don't understand what you're saying. Um, oh, look, and then he I was, mean, oh, Ultimately, I don't think that the Twitter ban is a consistent ban. I agree. You know, regardless of how insane he's being, I don't think it's a good precedent for Twitter. 
it's, it, it's not grounded in anything other than just sort of subjectivity. There's a lot yeah. of other worse, more direct stuff on Twitter. I, I understand that Ye is huge and, you know, has massive impact, but like, I don't think that the mods even knew what they were looking at. That's and a good point. This is going to come back and bite them because, you know, it's, uh, people are going to post the, the Hindu symbol. They're going to, you know, it's like, well, why aren't you banning that? Are you going to yeah. ban every rail? Are you going to ban every Raelian on Twitter? <laughs> well, in Scientology's, uh, have you ever seen yeah. Scientology's logo? I, th I think um, the Raelian movement in some ways has a lot more in common with Heaven's Gate than Scientology when it comes to the UFO stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's like, I don't know yeah. if you guys can see that. But yeah, it's kind of like that. It's like, yeah, it's weird. Um, that's an interesting point. I And I'm guilty of it. I saw Kanye's thing and I automatically assumed, okay, something to do between Jewish people and Nazis, right? Like, like yeah. some, there's some connection there, but <laughs> yeah. turns out, yeah, it's like a UFO cult. Yeah. Um, which is even weirder. <laughs> yeah. And and Kanye did start his own religion, right? He has a new religion that you can you could join. Um isn't he starting like company like company towns now or something? I don't know. I saw a story yeah, like about a, him. Like an eco that. village kind of thing. Yeah. The oh, company yeah. Yee town. Oh company. Oh, town. like kind of like Amazon. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It's a good question, Bill. Should he have gotten banned for this? It's well, and that's I'm, no. I, has to I, I, do, I do not think he should have, and I think that he should come and talk with Daryl on Minds, and we can flesh it out for real. Because I agree, people are, um, yeah. I pe people are. I, I think people are. It's a it's a very serious thing what he's doing. And he's confusing a lot of people. And I think that's where a lot of the harm comes from it because he's not being clear in what he's saying. He's And he's so rambly and inconsistent. But yeah, I don't personally feel a like violent intent. I feel anger. I, I feel anger coming from him for sure. And that's why I do think that, you know, it's anti-Semitic. Um, but look, anti-Semitic people exist and you can't just ban everybody who's anti-Semitic off social media. It's just going to make the world eat itself. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. The real question is like with a lot of this, who, since like Kanye on his own, I would doubt if he has any like violent intentions himself. I'm wondering what, like when you look at a zoomed out statistic, of hate crimes in the next year if the, if there's going to be an increase or not since a lot of the discussion is whether this is so ca stochastic terrorism right. like um like i mean of course you've seen the mm. same discussions around charlottesville and other attacks yeah. it's although it's, it's not really something that you can predict in the future can you define stochastic because i i i know what it means but can, like do you do you know have like a granular definition of it um for stata for um like stochastic terrorism in most yeah. cases, or at least how I think of it, it it's um not someone doing a direct call to action to violence because right. in a lot of cases, that's a crime. It's somebody ma Influencing. making hateful or doesn't even have to be hateful, making statements about a group in a repeated manner to a group mm -hmm. that's large enough to the point where someone's statistically bound to do something about it. Basically. That's interesting. Yeah. That seems that's like a... That is a very interesting phrase, and it feels like a very useful phrase for, you know, a pro censorship agenda. I'm not saying that the phenomena doesn't exist, and it is possible for, you know, calls, you know, indirect calls to violence to lead to violence. Yeah. But I but it's very eerily in the realm of, you know, words are violence. And it's like that phrase is essentially the bridge connecting words to violence. That's mm -hmm. what it means. 
And that's what it's trying to express. And I think that that's why we're starting to see it be used more. Like, like libs of TikTok, for instance, get, gets called that repeatedly. And arguably people, you know, like Antifa probably gets called that in certain regards by people on the right. Um, I don't know what the solution is. It's because it exists, but it seems like sort of rife, ripe for abuse. Right. And people are still. At that. And, and you can't be like people aren't responsible for other people doing crazy stuff. I That's you right. just even even though it's like the influence is there. The reality is that, you know, because we we have instances on both the left and the right where some deranged follower of whoever you know, mm -hmm. goes off and does something and then cites something from, you know, whatever influencer it is. And it's just that that happens all the time. So I don't know. I, yeah, I, I think I agree with yeah, it, it, it's unless, very, like, and, unless the creator specifically was calling for something, you know, and that's, you know, if, if someone's out there, if like Ben Shapiro's like, Hey, go, you know, do something terrible. And then someone does something terrible. Yeah. Then Ben, I think has a responsibility in that, but <clears throat> you know, especially when people, when the creators say, look, my stance is against violence and people still do it. Like what else can you do at that point? You know, you can't police people. <laughs> right. So you just have right. to, you know, I think the term provides a good distinction in that case, because like, it would be kind of stupid to go out and say like, yo, um kanye is like directly doing terrorism when he went on alex jones or like he's like telling people to commit like hate crimes or whatever mm. since that's not true like he did he didn't expressly say like yo no you guys everyone mm -hmm. watching alex jones needs to go do something right with these jews immediately i think the term's useful in that case because mm. words like that can in like can involve it's more some specific. people to commit acts of violence yeah I think it's I think it I think it has a useful case. Although I, I think it does get overused where like people will like call like literally anything they disagree with stochastic terrorism right, in cases where it's right. like too broad. I would agree with well, you. I think, I think because yeah. it, it's certainly better to say stochastic terrorism than terrorism, which a lot of people do. A lot of people go way overboard and just straight up call it, you know, somebody's words violence. So at least the phrase is, you know, a qualifier. But yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think it's just typically overused, but it, it certainly has a place and it's better than just, you know, simply saying that, you know, hate speech causes, you know, harm. Yeah. Or yeah, like well, that's harm. I, was, I was totally against Jan 6 and the Jan 6 hearings. That's, that's why I decided like that just didn't make any sense because, you know, Trump was not out there telling people to storm the Capitol. I mean, he did the opposite. He even came out and said, look, it's time to go home. Everyone made fun of him for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was just it's like the mob mentality. People just lost. But that would mind. be the perfect example of, you know, I'm sure he, he's been accused of stochastic terrorism because he was telling everybody to go, you know, go march to the Capitol. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. In DC, that is something that you do normally like there's all there's marches every day you know um but no one was calling for them to destroy the place you know right just they're just very unfair with him a lot of times like he he says enough wrong you know dumb shit that you don't have to like lie about the shit he you know he's not you know that he is honest about um so and it just i think I mean, that's it's where fascinating that's to me not to get too deep into this um but like i saw that the oath keepers guy got uh, convicted of sedition. Do you see Ooh, that? See. No. Mm -mm. How many years did he get? Or I assume I have they done a sentencing? Can you look it up, Sean. Just search. Uh, search Oath Keepers Jan Six. Sure. Because that's like a major legal. My yeah. Found guilty of seditious it's conspiracy. Oh wow. Spirit Roads. This guy, I remember, I must have been like a decade ago or or even like two decades ago. I remember here, like Alex Jones would interview this guy all the time. And they were kind of like this, 
yeah, I mean, it's 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 pretty wild. I think what's wild is that people who, you know, because the Oath Keepers, literally the point of the organization is all about like protecting the U.S. Mm. But then, you know, and that's what they claim they were doing in the whole process of Jan 6. And I'm, I'm not, I'm certainly not, I've, he probably completely broke the law and I, I, I have no idea what he did. But yeah. it's just very, it's very interesting that the crowd of people for Jan 6, like they thought they were defending the country. And clearly, you know, they broke the law and it was a, it was a total shit show. But I mean, it's just a crazy historical like inversion of of everything. I mean, yeah, yeah it's insane. Yeah. yeah, I remember watching some of the tapings of interrogations, which, by the way, is a horrible idea to do if you ever get arrested. But a lot of the interviews were very it's like when you see these people talking, they sincerely believed that there was like actually somehow voter fraud from right russia that would have like or not russia with like china that would have flipped over the election and like everyone is, was colluding against it and they were here to defend democracy and they thought like right. all of the police and military would side with them and it just like it's it's almost interesting to see to like see what to do in cases like that since it's like a question of who you hold responsible because a lot of the people they got these delusions from were like you not I Fox pushed it to some extent, although they really weren't the main one put the main ones pushing it was mainly social media and other outlets because these people sincerely believed it, but the people spreading voter fraud lies probably haven't committed any criminal offense criminal offenses. They may have committed a civil offense against Dominion voting, for example, but it's mm -hmm. like hard to like point where the responsibility is when there's so many people involved who like may or may not have directly committed a crime. For sure. Looks hey like guys, lost. Okay. Sorry, hey, my internet went. went. Now it's, I'm, I'm glad it didn't cut off the stream because we would have been stuck. Um, <laughs> all right, good stuff. Well, I don't know. Uh, I think that's good. I, I know we were gonna maybe talk about Zuckerberg attacking Apple as well, but I, I don't know. It's well, kind of its own conversation. What was interesting? What was interesting about that is that that was at the that New York Times. What was it? Um, that the thing with SBF that same yeah. event yeah yeah um did you oh, guys really? watch what the you know you know what event I'm i watched about. sbf did you was that good did anyone else mm. oh. oh how did it go the you mean the interview or which one yeah the interview oh, with uh that. sorkin yeah oh i mean he was squiggling in his in his seat he, his arm was shaking he was super nervous he should never have done that that was a horrible idea yeah and he made all kinds of admissions and also probably oh, no. that's gonna be playing I mean, in court. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really? I mean for sure. Yeah. They can use that. Yeah, Ooh. yeah it's an out court statement. Can. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, I, I don't I thought, I, 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 I thought about it, Bill. Like, don't you kind of wanna hit it head on though, like if you're him? I mean, don't you want to try and be like, if you truly, th you know, are saying, look, I didn't do anything wrong. This is what I know type of thing. No, he knows he did stuff wrong. Okay. He, he's a, he admits that he had, you know, no compliance, no risk management, no, um, you know, he okay. also, he also, he admits that he, you know, grabbed, cut, used customer funds. I mean, so He's like admitting it, but he's trying to come off as like the nice guy who was negligent. You know, yeah. he, he wants yeah. this all to be just, you know, pure oops. negligence. Oopsie, right? <laughs> it's like, oopsie, uh, lost billions, sorry. And the media treatment is just insane. Like, I mean, they were applauding him. And Sorkin, mm -hmm. I think... Uh, I don't know, Hayden, if you like how you felt, but like, I feel like Sorkin's questions were good. And, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's like, it's, I think the whole thing is inappropriate. Mm. I mean, for, 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 for the, 
I mean, I understand why they interviewed him. I'm sure it was super viral. Like he, they, you know, even in the interest of all the customers and everything, they got him to acknowledge and admit a bunch of stuff and stuff, you know, admissible uh, footage in court. But mm -hmm. the tone just that the media is taking with him is so eerie. And, you know, the New York Times included and the Wall Street Journal and everywhere, like, you know, compare uh, there, there very interesting clip like juxtaposing uh, Ma Bernie Madoff getting like heckled in the streets and like chased and yelled at versus like Bankman kind of getting this applause at the you know New York Times. It's, it, I, I they the audience wasn't completely like applauding him, but like you know, no one was heckling, no one, there were no boos, there were no. There was no negative energy in the room, really. I think people were kind of like feeling bad for him almost. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's that's what money does, though. It carries that influence that, you know, even when you get nailed for something, people are still like, ooh, you know, what don't we know? You know, like it, it's going to be interesting. Plus, some people obviously benefited from <laughs> from that company, so... Also, the fact that like all the missing money and like the hacked money, I I think that he's my sense is he's he's a step ahead of everybody, and that he stashed money away and he had access to stuff, and you know he's gonna let that crypto sit there for a decade so he can you know use it to you know as an emergency fund down the line, and I I just can't. But, Based on some threads that I read, like he had this a whole like custom accounting system to hide certain things. And so to, to play dumb, I just don't take him as the type of guy who like didn't know what was going on and just like wasn't involved. He seems like he was completely I mean, Alameda was a wholly owned company by him. And he's trying to act like he like wasn't really involved. Since it's, it's, hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, that is like, that's the angle because there's a lot of people like, I don't know how involved he was. So, you know, yeah, that is his angle. It's like, I don't, oops. Oh, there was a back door. Well, I don't know anything about that. You know, like. He's way too smart to know. I don't even to, know to, how to code. <laughs> yeah. I don't even yes. know how to code. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter yeah. if you, it doesn't even matter if he knows how to code. What matters is, did he have people surrounding him who could code for him whatever he wanted? And did he have access? The answer is yes. Yeah. No, it makes sense. But so yeah. Any right, any they, weekend they, plan? Any plans for the weekend, guys? Well, I'd like to get on a hike probably if I could. Oh yeah. Yeah. How my, might put, how my, how my, my, go ahead, Hayden. Oh yeah, I said I was actually considering doing the same depending on the weather. Nice. Yep, got to get out there. Man, I'm checking out Detroit. Out. <clears throat> Which one? I'm in uh, Detroit. Uh, I don't know if you remember Dimitri from uh, from the live events. He used to host the live some of the live events. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Nice. He's got a house out here. It's really nice. So it's uh, we're, I've actually never been to Detroit. So we're gonna do some sightseeing tonight. Um, we'll see as if it's as terrible as people say it is. So, but uh, so far I've. It's pretty nice so far, you know. I've n I'm never in Michigan, so and I'm in Eastern Time now, which is a big difference. You know? But well, Mantone and I are on a pull up challenge today, and I've I'm at zero. Um, where you are, <laughs> I'm at uh, 60, 60, yeah. 60. 60? Right. Ooh. Six zero? Yeah, we're going to a hundred. Wow. I mean, nope, yeah, we're on the we're, we're on the daily grind together. You know, anyone who wants to join the join the movement, just hit us zero, up and we'll get you in the back. Zero. Thread. Wow. We did. Uh, we we we're at six. What are we at? Six hundred push-ups. Six hundred and fifty. Six fifty. A day. In well, we do. We go up fifty more each week. So we started at like two hundred, and now we're all the way up to six fifty. No, so we I do them on once a week. Once a week, we do them once a week, so and we go up fifty each week. Oh my god! So one day, yeah, you do them in one day, 
and then you have to you basically have to do like a morning session and an evening session. Yeah, that's or just do them scattered. I, I liked I like to break them up into sessions, but yeah, no. Hey, look, it works if you do it. Oh, it would. I would also like to talk about the Liver King a little bit, but uh, oh. anyway, we can do that. <laughs> we can do that next time. Yeah, that's a <laughs> for resin. That's a that story. I'll be around. Oof. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. Everyone, hit us up. Thanks and for this out. Uh, until next time. Bye.